I don't know what the hell I was doing during the 80s. I was a baby. All the fabulous things that happened in this decade, I was not a part of. We're gonna remedy that. My name is Teresa, and this is fashion of the 1980s. I listen to exclusively synth wave now. If it were possible, I would live in like a synth wave grid with the synth wave sun behind me and the cityscape around me. I watched a lot of shows in the 90s from the 80s, lots of reruns, old movies, and they were A-list movies. Romancing the Stone, Back to the Future, Predator, Bloodsport, Missing in Action 4, American Ninja with Michael Dudikoff. Lots of martial arts. There was a time when I wanted to be a ninja. I would go around kicking things around my home. I kicked my brother. The 80s had the greatest movies. When you get old, you want to reminisce about the happy times of your uh, your youth. One of the happiest times of my youth is watching reruns on television. Okay, that sounds really sad. In the 80s, you went big or you went home. Excess was king, materialism was king. The fashion reflected that. You went big, you went bold, you went colorful, you had a crispy perm, you went heavy on the blush, you added two more shoulder pads to your already broad shoulders, you had your power suits. Oh, you want more, but you know you shouldn't. But in the 80s, nobody said you shouldn't. They said you should. People were obsessed with money. They were obsessed with the lives of the rich. There was a lot of television shows revolving around rich families like Dynasty, Dallas. It was a time of unbridled consumerism, materialism, and capitalism. It was a great time, unless you're poor. Politics aside, Reagan seems like a nice grandpa. He seems like a guy that you would like to have a slice of apple pie with. Apple pie with a little American flag planted right on the crust. Of course, he wouldn't buy you the apple pie. You have to work for it. You probably have to go work at the mall for minimum wage. What was the minimum wage back in the 80s? $2 an hour. You have to work at hot dog on a stick, making that lemonade and dipping those corn dogs in the batter. And then you have to have a second job working at KB Toys, you know, stocking up Star Wars action figures and skip it. Remember, skip it. Or maybe you'll have a third job working at Radio Shack. Don't all roads lead back to, to Radio Shack? What did they even sell in Radio Shack in the 80s? I think they sold some transistor radios. The 70s had career women in power suits and power pants blouses with ascots, but the 80s took it up a notch. We don't just have career women. We have career women ascending into high power positions. Donna Karen rode to prominence with her power dressing workwear line, big old shoulder pads, spiky high heels, bold accessories, primary colors, a revival, if you will, of the 1940s. I think Joan Crawford, big bold brows, big shoulder pads, slim trim little waist, the tall Amazonian body ideal. At the same time, in men's fashion, they also reflected this 40s revival with the same big shoulder pads. Blazers, jackets became bigger, a little bit more oversized and double-breasted. Very reminiscent of the 40s man's big shoulder double-breasted suit. Bright colored ties, patterned shirts, bright colored suits were also an essential for the white collar male worker. When I was little, my mom would always take me to get my hair cut in this Asian salon that was trapped in the 80s. They would have have the haircut book, haircut styles with models with brazy permed hair, blue eyeshadow, and super bold, super sharp magenta blush. They had one motorcycle glove, a zebra leotard, a black tutu. That was the look the salon was trying to give you. So in the 80s, there was a book published called the Yuppie Handbook, which is kind of like a manual for the lifestyle and look of the yuppie, the young urban professional. The prep and the yuppies go under the wasp umbrella. The yuppie is associated with the city, specifically Wall Street, like the young urban professional, you know, doing their thing in suits with their big old brick bones. But if they mellow down, they earn their fortune, then they go to the suburbs. They live that country club lifestyle, the preppy. The stereotypical preppy outfit, like Ken Doll's hair, pastel polo in peach or canary yellow with a sweater tied over your shoulder. You know, that whole just came from a 
tennis match or squash match look. The New England prep look, Ralph Lauren, Perry Ellis, Liz Claiborne. You got your cable knit fisherman sweater with your blouse peeping through the collar. That's the grown up look. If I were to time travel back to the 80s, I wanna be anywhere between eight and 18. I don't wanna be an adult. I want that idyllic stranger things childhood minus the uh, supernatural occurrences. I want a pastel candy colored Sweet Valley High childhood with fluffy permed hair. I wanna hang out at the mall. I just wanna go to the mall, guys. I just wanna go to the mall when it was popular to go to the mall and hang out at the mall. I wanna be a mall rat. And I just wanna go shopping with daddy's credit card, like in Valley Girl. I wouldn't dress like Madonna. It's too edgy for me. I'm very bland, very vanilla, very norm core. So I would definitely dress like a prep. I would own Keds in every color of the rainbow, pair it with a nice tapered pant with plenty of room in the seat or stirrup pants. I would pair that with a lavender striped polo shirt or a giant oversized United Colors of Benetton sweatshirt. And you better believe I would own some jelly sandals and I would wear them with socks. I would wear them with really little socks. And that's where I will thrive. I would go to the mall, I would go to the Galleria, go inside Radio Shack and look at the electronics there. I would go into Sam Goody and I would buy a, a cassette. I wanna live that Sweet Valley High dream, I swear. I would go on a date with Bruce Patman and he would have a vanity plate. I forgot what kind of car he drove. I think he had a Porsche. It would say one Bruce one. On our date, he would park and I would have to fight him off because he's trying to, he's trying to get to home base, you know, and we don't do that here in Sweet Valley High. He would not get anywhere with me, you know? He would have to take me to multiple dates to the radio shack. The new romantic look, it was big in the music scene, in the club scene in the early 80s, made popular by designer Vivian Westwood in 1981 with her pirate collection. Ruffles, big shoulders, puffy shirts galore. We have the pirate captain coat with the big brass buttons with gold epitaphs. Got a lot of tricorn hats. Punks, leather, leather pants, tight, skinny pants, leather jackets with a lot of patches, safety pins, the mohawk, lots of hair gel. First time I heard London Calling, it wasn't through any kind of album. I heard it as part of the Billy Elliot soundtrack. Sid and Nancy. Never listened to any of Sid's music. I was more of like a Whitney Houston, Cindy Lauper. I would like to say that I have eclectic taste in music, but to be honest, I just like pop. Bruce Springsteen, very deep man. I went to the river, found the river was dry. That's very deep. Darkness on the edge of town. He's he's broody. But then he became very famous with Dancing in the Dark, which is his most pop song, which is also kind of broody. The boss, he kind of straddles the line between poppy and deep. He straddles the line with his tight blue jeans. In the 80s, everybody was very obsessed with exercise. I don't know if they actually participated in aerobics class as we have been led to believe. Everybody certainly looked like they went to aerobics class. There was a lot of spandex, a lot of colorful spandex, lime green, caution green, spandex bodysuit with a very high bikini cut, by the way. Put that over your bright Barbie pink leggings. Add a LA gear high top sneaker and some scrunchy socks, leg warmers, sweatbands, jogging in place, dance movies, dirty dancing, flash dance. Footloose. Oh, how could I forget Footloose? I definitely remember watching a lot of Saved by the Bell reruns, caffeine pills episode. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so, I'm so scared. And I remember that when I was a child, I planned like an adult wardrobe for myself. And then when I grew up, I would also have aerobics where I was in a 10th grade high school aerobics class. What we did in aerobics class was we walked to Carl's Jr's. <laughs> we had some chicken nuggets. There was this one song that my aerobics teacher, who was Gen X, by the way, she grew up deep in the 80s. She kept playing. Oh, Mickey, Mickey, you're so fine. You're so fine, you blow my mind. Hey, Mickey. 
Hey, Mickey. That never gets old. Let's talk about streetwear. In the 80s, hip hop, rap, R&B became more mainstream. This is when we have sportswear as streetwear. Distressed, tapered, light wash jeans and nylon jackets, hooded sweatshirts, baseball caps, but particularly their Pumas and the Holy Grail of streetwear, the white Adidas. In sharp contrast to the day glow colors, the bright pastels of Western fashion in the 80s, we have Japanese deconstructionist fashion, stark black minimalism, the cool chic look of Rei Kawakobu and Yoji Yamamoto. Lots of minimalist black, which in a decade where everything was bright and colorful was actually very edgy, paving the way to the minimalism of the 90s. If there's one thing I have to say about the 80s and action movies, there was a lot of big muscle, there was a lot of big booms, the gratuitous waving of the American flag, tons of white ninjas, tons of of vaguely European villains. The very tanned, suave European villain with some kind of dictator compound. And he would always wear these like dictator outfits, safari-esque buttons. And that was another thing that was big in the 80s, the return of like adventure wear and safari wear. Like with Banana Republic, the whole khaki out of Africa look. Then you catch a lot of these vaguely European movie villains in safari wear. They basically are dress like their National Geographic's photographers with their khaki vests. Most of them have some kind of like crazy dealings with ninjas. My mom had a collection of geometric earrings. They were clip-ons, they were from Kmart. I remember little, little triangles, dongly, dangly, dongle balls. I owned two caboodle knockoff cases. I would keep my mom's clip-on earrings in them and I would also keep other little secrets like my gum. What a great childhood my generation had, the elder millennials, that is, I would go back in a minute. You know what? I don't ever have to live in the present. I'm just going to live my childhood over and over again. I'll go to the salon. I'll get my crispy perm. I'll go to Radio Shack. I'll buy a hot dog on the stick. I feel like I'm dressed like... Amazing. This is the first time I have a pocket that actually is a pocket. Like you could fit items in here. What can I fit in here? Remarkable.